All right. Hello again, adventurers, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Legend of the Three Kingdoms. Yes, this is one of my custom D&D &D campaigns set in my screwed up, like desperately in need of therapy world and the people b -b -b below me. Uh, are the people that are probably currently plotting my downfall. Um, so that's fun. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, announcer events real quick. Uh, today, uh, another d, &D deep dive uh, came out with a guest. Uh, this guy, I'm not kidding. I emailed a bunch of friends because I was having a hard time uh, getting guests for uh, this homebrew series. Uh, and one of my friends, uh, whom we mentioned in the show, her name is Kiri. She's amazing. Uh, that's her book. One of them. Um, she introduced me. She goes, Hey, this is a real life artificer. You need to talk to him. And a hundred percent. He has like rotary phones that he's added Bluetooth to so that he can use them. He has a typewriter that he wired up and everything so he could use it as a Bluetooth keyboard, like an actual like 1900s typewriter that is cool. fully able to, he is the coolest guy ever. His name uh, is Joe Louie. Uh, and we talk about artificers. Oh, Joe Louie. Yeah. He's super cool. Hmm. Um, and I'd never met him before. And, and now, uh, <laughs> now I want to spend the next seven years talking to him because he's such a cool guy. But anyway, I remember seeing, them, I remember seeing uh, Carrie play with him years ago when she lived in Seattle. Yeah, he. Uh, I, I I hadn't realized this. He was actually uh, on the old D and D Extra Life uh, uh, when D and D first did it. The first two years, he was actually one of the. Uh, he was one of the players, uh, and has been playing D and D for forever. And we we had some really really cool uh, ideas about like the idea that he pitched was a uh, a bio artificer, where instead of like. You know, all the clockwork and making magic tool, you use magic to modify biological things. And like, we're like, oh, you could use the healer's kit as your, uh, uh, as your tools. Cause artificers, their spellcasting focus is, is a set of artisan's tools. We're like you could totally use the healing kit and you could just be like Dr. Frankenstein style. Like, I mean, depending on how you want to go up about this subclass, you go full on body horror. You could go, you know, whatever the hell you want it. But, sounded like such a weird unique version of an artificer so yeah anyway it's my youtube channel youtube.com just trader journey check it out because it was a uh it was really really cool and i've really been enjoying these uh conversations i get to have with 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 people uh about homebrewing so anyway um uh other than that i don't think there's any big announcements Oh, I put up uh, uh, my thoughts on the D&D Direct. It's on there as well. I don't know if any of you guys got to watch the D&D Direct or have, have heard things about it. It was cool. Not a whole lot was really surprising. Uh, and Dia or not Diablo. Baldur's Gate 3's entire contribution was, We're still here! Don't forget about us! Uh, which I found hilarious. Uh, and then a lot of people thought Neverwinter uh, was going to go to Dragonlance because their next Neverwinter, the um, MMO, uh, their next expansion is called Dragon something. And like, oh, they're going to Dragonlance. I'm like, no, they're revamping the first storyline they ever did, which was based on T uh, Rise of Tiamat. Uh, so that's, that's all it is. They mentioned that you fight Tiamat at the end. I'm like, oh, I remember because I beta tested Neverwinter. Like I used to really, really love the game. And so, yeah, I'm like, oh, they're just going to bring back stuff from literally four or five years ago. Or maybe even six years now, because it started, Neverwinter was a, uh, a fourth edition game. It, start, it started like all the mechanics and everything were straight out of fourth edition. And then they changed it like, no, it's, it's fifth edition. Uh, and it doesn't make any sense because the fourth edition mechanics actually made sense with encounter powers and daily powers and that. And now it doesn't make sense at all. I will say I like that uh, Joe Star and I were on the same page when he because he talked about his review on that too, and I thought it was hilarious because people because people for the longest time been saying spell jammer, give a spell jammer, give a spell jammer, spell jammer, and they finally gave a spell jammer and they announced it and it's official. And then I looked over in the chat and one of the last thing they said was, "Give me Dark Sun." 
<laughs> as soon like, as I saw, as soon as I saw Thread Cream, I'm like, because one of my uh, one of my buddies, he was also on D and D Dive, the Mighty Jerd. Uh, uh, he goes, yeah, Spelljammer is okay, but I I really want a low fantasy setting, and I'm, I I guess I just have to accept that Fifth Edition is not going to give me my low fantasy uh, setting. And I just underneath his tweet, I just go size and dark sun. <laughs> so that's about as low fantasy as you get. Post-apocalyptic, yeah. the gods are all... The gods aren't gone, they're dead. The planet magic. is slowly dying, magic kills people. Yeah, you can use magic, it comes at a price. It's such a cool system, I'm waiting for... And I saw Thrykreen, I'm like, no, they're from Aethys. Yes, they show up as spell jabbers, but they're from Dark Sun, where, like, halflings are cannibals, and, and <laughs> elves are I guess my favorite thing about the, the Dark Sun is just everything is horrible. Like, if you see <laughs> they travel in packs, if you see a pack of halflings, it's not like, One. oh, it's the Shire! One. Where's Mr. Frodo? It's, ah! <laughs> They're gonna eat me! Anyway, so... <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, I guess I'll ask, because I didn't get to talk to anybody about the, the d d direct. Uh, I'll ask you guys, because this is my show and we don't have to play D&D the entire time. Uh, first of all, do you guys like the idea? Because a lot of people were pissed off that a direct was happening. It's like, well, no, they're turning it into a video game. Uh, did you guys like that there was a direct kind of thing? Do you prefer to just find out on a website what the new books are? I wasn't surprised at all like this. Like, like that's what online expos have been doing for quite a while. They've been trying to get into this and then that more so since the pandemic. I mean, they were, they've been trying to shift over to that. And quite frankly, it's, it's, you have shows like D and D beyond, you have shows like Wizards of the coast and they're trying, they're showing we have digital stuff. Why wouldn't they also, you know, this could be just shy of them have, instead of them having their own convention, which they kind of do sometimes with, you know, the D and D live play convention, which they used to do. Um, maybe there's soul host people are wanting to do that, but why wouldn't they just have time just to like to utilize the platform and go, Hey, this is what we're doing. You're getting it directly from us as opposed to hearing it from every other channel, but us. I liked it. I thought it was fun. Like, I, yeah. go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, I, I, I like the idea of it. I don't see a problem with it. Anything you guys were stoked about i liked the new terrain box things that they had the those are cool i did see that so some people, cool. i think that like some, some people i've heard some people theorize that that could be a because uh, it's, it's like a very basic set but like i've seen like those 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 sticker things they utilize when i was a kid i actually remember having toys like that it was like a it was like a play mat and you had these sticker characters you could peel off and put back on in different positions and all that that's kind of what it, that reminded me of it looks um, cool and people are saying like well yeah, i can see that for beginners like i can see that for people going to conventions because oh, that's yeah. really easy to go around it's like that's one two someone came up with a really great idea uh i want to give a shout out to because over on pixel circus they came up with this really great observation there are after school programs that have after school DD programs those would make really great donations yeah definitely and i i, I, again, I am not an artistic person uh, as far as visual arts is concerned, all of the art I've ever created in the entirety of my life has been five lines with a bunch of dots and hashtags on it. Um, like, that's all I can do visually, uh, and I don't like building maps. I've gotten better at it because I think it's really beneficial, especially when you're playing online, to have a battle map. I, I think it works. As I say, after I didn't design a battle map for today, which has nothing to do with why we're having this conversation before we play. Um, but, um, I, I love the idea of being able to take out these things and just lay them down and then go, Oh, I want to put a hole here. And like, that was the thing I love the most is being able to put holes or, or tables and things like build out these really, really cool, 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 cool maps. Cause again, I come from a convention background. We had people at the conventions, like all the DMS, all of us had a wet, uh, a wet erase map. Yeah. Um, that was kind of the prereq to running at conventions that no one talked about. And it wasn't like you weren't allowed to, but all the DMs had it. Um, and 
different DMs would have different things that they did. did. I had one guy that he would run the same adventure five or six times throughout the convention, and he would have his wet erase map before he even got there. He would have it designed, and it looked gorgeous. Whereas me, I would run four different adventures because that meant I got to keep them. Um, and uh, I would draw them as I was playing, and they always looked like shit because I'm not good at that. With this, being able to just go into my little box and build out and then put the stuff up, I love that. It's super cool. And plus, they still make, you know, all kinds of, like, you know, direct from the company or independent makers make map tiles. Yeah. There's all kinds. So I mean, you can I have, have... Like, all kinds of variants that way. Where is it? There. All those yeah. down there? That's... Fourth edition had something similar. They were called dungeon tiles. I have yeah. all three of the ones that they released. I used to use them. Uh, these seem like an upgraded version of that because, again, you can put shit on them and take it off. I love that. I think it's super cool. So, yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Um, I just realized uh, I didn't change the title of this, so it says we're still playing Traversing the Veil. So, I'm going to fix that real quick. So, I can at least have it say. Going from one messed up scenario to another messed up scenario. <laughs> That's how it goes. I don't. I don't. I, I. I've come to terms recently that I don't write nice stories. I write messed up stuff and then hope that my players can fix it before they all have mental breakdowns. So. Uh, so that being said, um, if if when they do another D and D direct, I'm totally going to get other people. Uh, to stream it with me, and we will all react and say snide comments as, more likely than not, Baldur's Gate 3 will go, we're still here! <laughs> hey, the last computer game was was actually pretty interesting. I, you know, I, I'm 100% going to buy Baldur's Gate when it comes out, because the things I didn't like about Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 were, I don't like real-time uh, CRPGs, because I, mm. the it requires me to micromanage things and the AI is never good enough to understand that, oh, the wizard cast a fireball. Maybe I shouldn't walk directly into where the fireball is being cast. Um, I like turn-based. That's what D&D is. I never understood why all the games that you would, all the D&D games would all be real-time stuff. And I'd be like, D&D is a turn-based game. Like, the rules are already there for that. Why the hell would you trans... Whatever. Uh, so yeah, I'm super excited about it. I am done with early access anything. I don't I don't buy any early access games. The only game I've bought in early access uh, in the past like four years uh, has been uh, Vampire Supi Survivor, and that's because it was five bucks. Or no, it wasn't. I think it was like three bucks or something. It was massively cheap. So I'm like, I don't care if I don't get my value out of this. It looked fun for like an hour's worth of play, and I'm willing to spend three bucks on that, so... Anyway, we should probably play some Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Probably. So it's time to return to the legend of the three kingdoms. And every time I say that, I always want to go, Legend of the Hidden Temple. The you Silver Shrine of the Silver Monkey. All right, blue barracudas. Sorry, that was my childhood. Not, not too late to put Olmec in this. <laughs> I put Olmec in one of my games. It didn't work out. Um, <laughs> adventurers are mean to giant talking faces. Um, anyway, to return to the legend of the three kingdoms. The party has been transported into fairy tales. In trying to discover more about the Major Domo, they searched his office and found the walls covered in tomes and tomes full of <clears throat> what seemed like fairy tales. And as they read through one of them, they realized that some of these fairy tales were about them. 
So after exhausting all their little leads, they left Ilmorn, went into the local of a forest where they tracked the major domo. And as they got in there, they started finding more and more things that defied explanation. Creatures and traps pulled directly from fairy tales from their youth. They eventually came to a bridge guarded by a sphinx and forced them to answer three riddles. It took a little bit of effort, but they were able to pass by and got a hint from the Sphinx as a reward. Now, they have recently heard or seen the flicker of firelight in the distance, and they prepare for what may possibly be their final encounter with the Major Domo. Also, I just want to say, out of character, it was really sobering to hear those same three clues given to a mutual friend of ours. <laughs> and having her work that shit out in real time, zero hints, and I'm just like, okay. It's because Kiri is a fae, and fae thrives. That is a good point. That's a fair point. On riddles. And one of them, I found out later, one of them is directly from The Hobbit. Um, which I didn't realize. I thought that's where you got it from. No, I, I searched... Phrase your searches correctly and carefully, folks, because I put in adult riddles and got mm. a bunch of results I couldn't use and then changed it to riddles for adults and got a bunch of pages I could use. And I just looked for the hard ones, and that was one of them. Uh, and I would assume the reason it's hard is because most kids these days never read The Hobbit, uh, which is horrible because the lord of the rings is kind of a slog to get through but the hobbit is brilliant like i really enjoyed the hobbit the lord of yeah. the rings i enjoyed the first book the second yeah. book two towers is a bit of a dry it's, it's a bit dry and then the first like i only made it through the first quarter of return of the king because the second half of the two towers is sam and frodo walking for half a book and then the last or the first little part of uh, Return to the King is more of Sam and Frodo walking and I'm like screw this I did not buy a road al almanac I don't want to read this anymore uh, and after that it gets really good but... Peter Jackson broke my heart with The Hobbit that's a, that's a different ah. time it's like man it's it's one of the things that worries me about the D&D &D movie is Hollywood people just get this thing in their head of like well yeah this is really good but we can make it better no, what helps can't. is when you actually have fans of the genre making the actual <laughs> thing. We've seen evidence of that with the comic books. I'm that's what I have hopes for with the D and D movie. And I, I just look at it and like nothing's going to be worse than like the original one. And the original one is just like so bad it's good to watch later. It's like a cult thing. The the funniest thing I heard about the D and D movie, what they need to do is have a character get killed off early in the early in the movie, <laughs> and then have the same actor or the, the party that <laughs> a new character played by the exact same actor. That would be amazing. I had somebody pitched on uh, on Twitter. They're like, oh, the movie has to have an after credit scene where it's the director of the movie sitting there. That was me. Going, that was oh, me. yeah, it was you, Imp. And then my, my response was yes. And then that entire end scene needs to be, okay, so when can you guys meet next time? And it goes on for 20 minutes of them going, well, I can't do this. Why can't do that? And they decide that the next time they can meet is in like four years, and then we get the title for the next movie. In four years. Yeah. Anyway, so you guys have just finished crossing this bridge, and you've gone a little bit further, and you can see in the distance uh, flickering light as if it is coming from some sort of flame. Um, but it is far enough away that you can't actually uh, see or hear anything f f from it. You can just, through the trees and through the kind of mist of everything around here, you can see, obviously, firelight. What would you all like to do? So 
So I just, <laughs> every time I hear that off, I, it's in my head. There's a lie. Yeah, I guess we'll. Hey, we're almost like, are we, going, are we going towards this? I mean, I think we have to. Yeah. But carefully, slowly. Is this still on the path? Or is there no more path? Uh, there is a, a very... Um, the closer you guys get to whatever this thing is, the more kind of defined this path is. Now you're now it's not just like a deer trail where, you know, uh, repeated use has kind of created a place where the grass isn't yeah. growing as thick. Now it's almost looking... You know, it's it's packed dirt and it looks much more d -d 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 deliberate. So, <clears throat> what would you all like to do, 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 do? I think we need to uh, very carefully uh, and deliberately follow the path. So, Vala starts walking down the path towards the flames. Okay. As you guys uh, are g -g going, <clears throat> you start to uh, you start to hear noises, which I don't have for. Sorry, I'm trying to make this look like I'm doing this on purpose. That didn't work. All right, well. There we go. All right, sorry. Have to get the, the right mood in here. <clears throat> so as you guys are going through the forest, you start to hear kind of the briefest. It's a little bit louder than I wanted it. You start hearing the briefest hints of merriment and music. And the closer you get, the the more you hear voices and instruments and percussion. Uh, and eventually, you get to a point where the forest itself starts to thin. And you can see through the thinning f -f 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 forest figures moving in front of a very, very large bonfire, easily 20 feet across and 30 feet high. It's just massive, large, ba 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 bonfire. And as you guys get closer and closer, you can see all these people kind of wandering around. You can see tables set up in various ba ba ba, -ba places. Uh, people seem to be drinking. They're laughing. There's dancing around the f -f fire. Everything just seems very merry and wonderful. What would y'all like to do? Um, why do I not trust this? Um, because you have a a clear thing against arcane bullshit, and I will uh, pull out my flute of the piercing flame mm -hmm. and begin playing some music. Okay, or join <clears throat> or joining in. As you start to play, make me a wisdom this is a saving throw. Of course. That is a dirty 20. Okay. As you start to p -p play, <clears throat> you are very used to just kind of breaking into song. And this particular instrument makes it even easier for you to just kind of remember uh, melodies and things like that. And they just kind of flow out of you. And as soon as you start b -b playing, you start playing a melody you have never played before. And you can't really tell where it's coming from, but it fits in perfectly with the music that is being played around you. And as you play it, you have a hard time stopping 
and you find it impossible to play anything else. And so it takes a little bit of effort, but you do eventually go, and you kind of take it away. Uh, you take the flute away from your mouth and you stop playing. Um, but you still have no idea where this song came from, but it fit perfectly with everything going on. I'll just look at the others and go, well, that was a mistake. As everyone just, <clears throat> there's a compulsion here. Something uh, like a feeling of wanting to join in the festivities. Is, any, is this uh, fairy... sound familiar to anybody for fairy tales? I mean, fairy tales in general. Usually, how they trap mortals sometimes. Mm. Do the do these people can, are, are we close enough to tell? Like, do these people look like they're operating under their own agency? Uh, make me an insight check. Uh, fuzzy dice, you failed me. Uh, 13. 13. They look like they're having a great time. Mm. Nothing about them seems... Nothing about what they're doing seems forced. You don't see any sort of pain or anything on their face. They just, they look like they're having an absolute blast like this is the greatest party they've ever been at they don't their feet aren't bloody <laughs> not that you can tell uh well I'll, I'll have you roll a history check for before me okay i would also remind fairy tales about people eating the food from fairyland uh 10 okay so as you are kind of looking over this whole thing, <clears throat> something about this seems familiar, but for the life of you, you can't tell what it is. You're not sure if it's the music. No, it can't be the music because you've never heard it before in your love of life. Or maybe it... No, you, you... Something about this seems familiar enough. It's, it's kind of like when you have a word that you're trying to think of, and it's right in the back of your head, but for the life of you, you cannot tell. You know the word exists, but for the life of you, you can't remember it. It's kind of what you feel like he <laughs> here. Um, I will uh, go up to one of the people mm -hmm. and be so, and just, so what, what? what's the occasion? Why is everybody celebrating? Um, there are various groups of people. I just need to know which ones you want to go uh, up to. There are people that are kind of like dancing around. Um, there are people that are kind of sitting and d -d drinking. And then there's there's a whole area where food is being prepared. So we'll go of those to some of the people, areas, the people drinking. Drinking. Okay. Um, as you come over, uh, there is uh, an older j -j 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 gentleman with uh, a relatively long beard long enough that uh when he places his his mug down you can see it kind of droops into his mug every so often he'll get up and the bottom of his dream beard is just soaked in whatever it is that he's d -d 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 drinking which as you get close to him you realize must be relatively high proof because he is sweating alcohol mm. and he sees you come over like ah! ha, ha! and he immediately envelop envelops you in this big sweaty alcohol induced hug you start feeling lightheaded just from the fumes um, and it's not just alcohol that you smell obviously this person either has not bathed in a while or has been working very very hard um, and he kind of gives you this huge hug and he lifts you up off the ground you feel your back crack a little bit as he kind of holds you in the air puts you down and is like it is so great to see you here and he shoves a mug in your face oh oh thank you um and he used my name didn't he uh or, he used a pronoun no. he just used okay. a pronoun i'll be like oh uh, yes uh what are we celebrating everything isn't it great oh uh, try the mead is heavenly let's 
Let's chug together, shall we? Yeah! And, and he takes a big drink. And I just, like, pour it over my shoulder. Okay. As you pour it, it doesn't stop pouring. Like, you keep mm. hearing it dribble out, and as you bring it forward, there's still mead in your mug. Mm. And he takes a long swig. Like, this is a 30-second... And you can see it's it's going down his cheeks. It is going into his beard more. And finally reads it out. Ah, oh. oh, that's refreshing. Yeah, it's amazing. And who do we have to thank for all of this? Who else? And then you see his face gets a little bit blank. You know who to thank, Daisy, don't you? Yeah! And he takes another drink. I I drop the mead and head back to the others. Daisy? Um. Um. It's, uh. I don't like this place. Do I. Re I start looking around and seeing if I recognize anyone. Now that you're actively thinking about it, the man that you were. Uh, dealing with uh, was uh, the uh, uh, head of the treasury for the mayor. Um, you've known him for the entirety of the time you were there. You interacted with him a lot. He has never been this much fun. Mm, yeah. Ever in his life. You know other people that have known him since birth. When he was a child, he was not this much fun. And as you look around, you're seeing more and more people that you recognize. There's the baker, whom whenever you came by, uh, despite the fact that everyone in the town hated you, this baker, um, Philip, was kind of soft through the facade. And whenever you would come by, he would just absent-mindedly just happen to have your favorite pastries there that he would very begrudgingly give you as as tribute and would kind of make a big show of being upset about it you knew every single time he was doing it because he knew what you were going through then over here right. was uh uh one of the members of your serving staff it was this young girl that that, that, that uh you barely interacted with except one time when you had come home this girl was uh, just in a quarter just bawling her eyes out and you came over and she had a little doll that the arm had f -f fallen off of and having made your own clothing and everything you're good with a needle and so without even thinking because this was in the first few months you'd been here you just sewed it back on for her she gave you the biggest hug and uh, for the rest of the time that you were the, 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 there, um, she, well, she was a member of the, the serving staff. She would always just do everything she could to be, be as kind as she possibly could to you and was always very pleasant and thing. And as you kind of go through every single person that you see here, dozens and dozens of people you know personally, and none of them do you have really negative memories of. These are all people, the few people in this town that made doing what you did bearable, the people that you kind of base the idea of, well, if I don't stop these people, these, you know, the if I don't stop the <clears throat> terrorists, these people will get hurt and killed. And so they were kind of the justification for you not, for you to do the things you did, and the entire party is full of them. So I, I will turn to the others and say, the... <clears throat> I did what I did here to try to help save some of the innocents. These are the innocents. Uh, they're all from the town. That was a baker. He used to make the best, uh, uh, best tarts. Um, over there is the treasurer. Um, and uh, over there's a little girl I, I fixed a doll for once. Um, do you think these people are, are real? Like he actually abducted the people you helped, or is this a, a facsimile? I'm, I'm, well, I mean, 
that that hug felt very real um and that glass uh, uh that uh <clears throat> excuse me that um mug that he gave me uh does not stop pouring but um as far as i know that treasure would not have would not have known that name i don't know where he heard that from there's something else here going on Well, that's strange. I mean, it's all strange, to be fair. Um, I don't know what we need to do here. Well, Daisy, we need to free these people. You know exactly what you need to do. And you hear a voice that instantly brings you back to childhood. Sitting around a fire, hearing... Uh, tales about travels you turn around to see your uncle Franklin Daisy hey. Daisy 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 come on join the festivities they're all for you we're so happy that you're here here take a swig of this it'll brighten up your day you can see the kind of gnarled very worked hands that used to hold you as he bounced you on his knees and told you stories of going to far off places he mentioned once seeing the barrier to the kale isles going right up to it and punching it just to show that he'd been there and coming all the way back to triregnum and in his gnarled hands, you can see a signet ring on his finger of the mayor's, uh, the mayor's uh, signet. Come on, Daisy. Take a swig. You like it. Bring your friends, too. This is all for you. Uh, I, I don't understand. I... I didn't think I'd see you again. Well, I always came back, didn't I? Yeah, but... I didn't know if I would. Well, now you have. Maybe we should have a drink to celebrate, right? Yeah. I she, wish, I wish she, for an Elvin. I really don't think you should drink that. She, she's just, she's just holding it. Yeah. Come on, there's more friends for you. Just come and join us. Have you tried a bit of a dance around the fire? Be lots of fun. You might even find, you know, uh, a friendly kind of friend there. Come on, you're old enough. You should be thinking about getting married, settled down. That's what your dad always want, didn't he? Yeah, we don't need to talk about what he wanted. Come what on. he wanted wasn't what I wanted. Well, I mean, you were a child back then. Now you're an adult. You're a lady. Come on. At least have a drink with me. I... I should introduce you to my friends. Um, of course. Wonderful. And, uh, this is, um... Uh, this is, uh, Lillian. And he does this kind of deep, roguish bow. It's a pleasure to meet such a refined young lady traveling with my favorite niece. Um, this is uh, Argenta. Wow, another wonderful, beautiful woman. <laughs> and and this is Relwyn. And as he looks... Uh, a new acquaintance. As he looks at you, uh, Relwyn, uh, before you can even react... Uh, 14 hits your AC. Before you can even kind of perceive what's happening, uh, his left hand comes around and tries to cold cock you. Shield. <laughs> and without thinking, you instantly just kind of raise your arm up and he collides with your sh shield and you mm -hmm. hear bones crunch as they hit hard metal Ooh. and wood. He's 
brother! And he kind of spits uh, at your f- feet. Oh, I can... Oh, I can... I can oh. And then he immediately... Daisy, what lovely friends you have, but, um... What, 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 are, you, what are you doing? I'm not quite keen on him. Do you know who he is? Uh, he, uh, he, he, he. No, we met him a, a few days ago. But well, you really have got to try picking your friends better. This person right here. And he gets in really, really kick it close, close enough that you can smell the last three meals he's had. He's from a cult, a cult that likes to sacrifice a living to fuel their undead pursuits. The only reason he's with you is you're strong and you're powerful. And when he kills you, he'll make an amazing undead. You can't get away from him, Daisy. He's gonna kill you. I'm not Daisy anymore. Did... And she'll set the mug down. Did, did Dad tell you what happened? You see his eyes kind of go vacant for a little bit. And he kind of steps back. Daddy? Your brother. Of, of, of course, um, Oswald, he, um, he's, uh, Daisy! Come on, have a drink with me. I haven't seen you so long. And he comes and he gives you a hug. Puts you down. I'm on. Let's go have some fun. This party's all for you. Excuse me, sir. That looked rather nasty. Do you need me to take a look at that for you? I'd be more than happy. And, 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 and. And Val is just like back, back, back. Uh, I rolled even worse this time. Another cold cop comes. F- 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 I think this time he just like dips back because he's like this guy's weird. This <laughs> you feel you feel the wind f- 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 from it. Like this is something he put his full weight behind. Um, as it misses you completely. Um. Uh, and then he doesn't even acknowledge. He's like Daisy, come on. And he grabs your arm uh, and starts just kind of roughly pulling you towards the party. Come on! Let's go have a dance! You haven't I'm danced with your uncle a... in years. I'm sorry, I noticed a pattern here. I'll just put my hand on her shoulder and not let her move. <laughs> even though he's pulling her. I'm... Uh, I'm sorry, uh... Uncle, At this been... point, the grip tightens on your arm, and it starts to become painful. You're hurting me. Daisy, just... just come to the party. This is all for you. Why are you making this difficult? I just need a moment. We've been traveling. It's been a, a long, stressful uh, trip through the woods. This and party eyes... was not... His eyes, as you're saying this, his eyes kind of go dim again. He kind of looks down and he sees what you're doing. Or he sees what he's doing. Daisy? Daisy, what's... Of course! You spend time with your friends. And then come... But you gotta save me a dance, alright? You promised me. You saved me a dance for tonight, alright? I promise. Alright. And he wanders away. I will go over to the others. Was unsettling. He he must be under some kind of a spell. I don't know why he's reacting so hostily towards you. If I look at any of the others, are we getting any stares? Is Relwyn getting any stares? Um, I think Relwyn be- clocked that with my passive. Uh, because you guys are not intermingled with everyone, like. You- Thus far, Val is the only one that's actually gone out and come back. The rest of you are technically at the outside. 
no one is acknowledging you. It's so like you weren't acknowledged until you went up and actually interacted with someone. The rest of the party seems almost oblivious that you guys exist. Okay. It seems like this party everyone's invited except you, Rowan. What? But I don't uh, know why. Is your uncle from Krushitalia? Yes. Have you seen him since you last? I haven't, I haven't seen him. Uh, I haven't seen him since I've seen the rest of my family. He was Where even. He was even yeah. longer. Um, yeah, from here. No, he's he he's f from Crucitalia. Um, Crucitalia is where you currently are. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm. <laughs> I'm everything is. Yeah. Um. He. Uh, he's from I, the Three Kingdoms. He's from the Three Kingdoms. Oh. He's from Sanguine. <laughs> he. Um. You're saying gibberish to Rowan now. <laughs> Right. Yeah. He's um, from where we come from, Rowan. That's what she's trying to say. Yes. Um, we grew up in a kingdom. I grew up in a kingdom ruled by the vampires. Is it possible that's actually him? It's well, honestly I mean, very possible. I mean, by your father. Yeah, so. But it, if it is him. <laughs> He is definitely suffering some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, curse. I noticed his finger. He has a signet ring of the mayor. Uh, oh. you, could this could this be like a could this be a Pip situation? Could be. I believe the um, the mayor had a ring. Wait a minute. The mayor's ring was a ring of suggestion, correct? The mayor's signet ring. Mm -hmm. So yes, the ring is likely how he's being manipulated. Now that I know what to look for, is there, do I see any other anything uh, similar to that? Go ahead and make a per perception check. I'll give you an advantage on it because you know what to look for now. Looking around, I already have advantage. Or if investigation, <laughs> uh, uh, if that works better for you, whichever whichever you like better. Yes, yeah, anyways better. I get a little bit better for a sec. I'm kind of scanning a group. The party. Advantage. Come on, fuzzy dice. Dirty 20. Alright, so looking around, um, Franklin, uh, uh, Vala's uncle, he's the only one you see wearing a ring. But you notice every, uh, every person that you're able to get a good look at, which is not a lot. Maybe, maybe six or seven p people you're able to, to get a really good look at you will notice a lump somewhere around kind of their collar region um, that is obviously something pressing up against their clothing. And you also notice everyone is wearing very high collared clothing. Mm -hmm. um, even the more kind of scantily clad women would have kind of like a high collar and then a window for their scantily cladness. Uh, everything. Like a choker or a wrapping? Kind of. Like the, the their, their top would go all the way up to their neck but then they'd have like openings here or uh, uh, they'd be short sleeve but high collar like it it works but as soon as you notice it as soon as you kind of pick up on it it's glaringly obvious everyone is wearing high collared things oh this is ooh, um, do, you, do you remember the thing we I helped uh, remove yes everyone seems to be covering something similar to that location that's how these people are being influenced which means the food is probably safe to unless of course that was intended for, the food's intended for us Would you like to skirt around the party? I don't I don't know what we're going to do here with this many people. Right, we can't How, is, there way, is there a way to stop the party? I The Sphinx The Sphinx the Sphinx said we have to be clever. The Sphinx said we can't 
he, he we said that the, she said that he's bound by the same rules he's imposing on everyone else. Yes, the rules of fairy tales, but it's fairy tales. People are forced to celebrate. Can we give them to stop celebrating somehow? Stopping the music? I mean, that's one thing. Um, the fire, the glorious bonfire, mm -hmm. it's 20 feet across? Uh, yeah, 20 feet across, about 30, 50 feet high. I will, I will turn to Argenta. How big of a fire does that knife have? Oh, you're right. Is your blade uh, put out? How far is it away from me, Jody? Uh, you guys are on the edge of this clearing. It's in the very center, so I'd say math is hard. Uh, let's say uh, from the edge of the fire to uh, the edge of the clearing is about 60 feet. 60 feet? Or, sorry, no, 80 feet, because it's only 20 feet across. Yeah, 80 feet. 80 feet? Uh, wait, wait here. Pardon? Wait no. here. Um, so Argenta is going to basically walk about 20 feet into the party and see what anyone does. Um, as you walk through, the first thing that uh, uh, happens uh, is uh, someone comes up to you and is like, have a drink! And they kind of push a mug in your face. I'll just take it, but not drink it. And then the guy kind of goes back to his to the table. Okay. With it in like my off hand, I just kind of walk about 20 feet up. As you move again, you suddenly feel a hand grab your waist and the hand that doesn't have the mug. And you feel someone start trying to dance with you as you see kind of a svelte looking um, gentleman, probably in his early to 20s, big grins plashed on his face is like, uh, fancy a dance, miss. And he just starts dancing with you. Um, how far am I from the bonfire? Uh, at this point, you've only you've only been able to get about 15 feet in, so you're still about 65 um, feet away. I'm just going to walk and see if I can't just use, you know, my mass to ignore him. Okay. <laughs> uh, as he, uh, as you attempt to walk away, the grip tightens, uh, and you feel kind of the grip on your waist to, 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 to tighten. Uh, why don't you go ahead and make me an athletics check, since I sincerely doubt you're going to use dexterity. Acrobatics. Alright. Mosh pit. Mosh pit. Mosh. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> 27. 27. I can't roll that high. <laughs> <laughs> what is your athletics mod for a fire? Plus 13. Plus thir oh, yeah. Barbarian. <laughs> Barbarian with expertise. <laughs> Oh, oh god. <laughs> yeah. Did that one thing. That's how it goes. Uh you feel the grip tighten around your hand and you have to stifle a laugh as this again he's he's a nice looking gentleman. He has some muscle mass. You could break him like a toothpick. <laughs> And so as he sits there and he tightens his grip and he tries to kind of force you into the dance, you literally just kind of lift him up and place him down and then turn and walk. Um. Uh, after the, the, that, people kind of part without even, like none of them actually acknowledge you're there. They just kind of move around you as you walk c -c -c closer. Okay, I get... 20 feet away exactly mm -hmm. and then it, I drop the mug and in the same motion just twirl my cloak around me to teleport 60 feet right in front of the bonfire okay and then once I'm there I'll draw my dagger to extinguish all flames within 30 feet of me okay as you draw the dagger you feel the pulse of kind of cold emanate f -f from it the fire in front of you dies down. And as that happens... Fala sheds a tear. Uh, 
as that happens, so do too does all the music stop. In front of you is smoldering cuckoo coals that used to be a massive b -b 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 bonfire. Around you, everyone has stopped. And they're all just looking, not at you, Argenta, but they're looking up. Because on the other side of the fire, which you would not have been able to see, because fire, there is a small uh, kind of dais uh, stage, I guess would be a better way to describe it. And on the stage is a table with seven seats. Sitting in the centermost seat is the major domo. But this is a side of the major domo you've ever never seen before. Instead of the kind of very fine clothing he used to wear, he's now wearing jet black plate armor. On his head is a crown. Uh, the crown itself has a uh, gem in the center of it and has a total of six points on it, each one with a separate gem. As you look at the rest of the kind of almost looking wrought iron is how kind of menacing and dark this is. You notice around uh, the neck is effectively a gorget, but the gorget has uh, chains that are attached to it. You see the chains go out to each of the individual six seats, which the six seats themselves um, compared to the center seventh seat are actually raised. And you can see kind of a little boxes underneath each one to raise them up so that the six children sitting in these chairs uh, can actually be seen above the t -t table, can actually see the t -t table. Each one of the, each one of the t -t children, there's a chain going from the gorget of the armor to a black, uh, what looks like manacle almost, that surrounds their n -n 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 neck and is attached. On each one of these manacles, you can see these runes kind of glowing. The kids themselves, Vala, you kind of look them over, and as you look at each one, you don't recognize any of them until you get to the one sitting directly next to, uh, directly next to the major domo and you're not quite sure how because she shouldn't be this young but it is most definitely the face of Senna but it's not the face you would expect to see as she wasn't that much younger than you this is the exact same face of Senna that you remember from when you were children And you can see the major domo. That wasn't very nice. And you recognize the voice, but it's definitely different. It no longer has the kind of formality it has. His accent seems to have changed. But it is most definitely the major domo and his presence has changed. Before, his posture was so perfect, it hurt you to look at him. Now, he's standing slouched, his hands are in kind of a pyramid shape, and he looks at you through these deep eyes that before he never made eye contact with anyone. There wasn't a servant's place to look directly into the eyes of even when he addressed you, he would always look to your chest or look above you. It was just how it worked. Now he looks you directly in the eyes. Don't you want something to drink? Perhaps a meal? No, I'm good. It's a shame. It's very good food. And I believe everyone should have a last meal. You let them go. I'll do whatever oh. you want. Well, uh, I 
You never quite understood this, did you? Even when I was the major domo, servant to the Lord Mayor. You weren't in control. It was always mine. Just like everything now. Did you think the people that you met were there because you wanted them to be there? Did you think the baker gave you your favorite pastry every day because he liked you? No. He did that because I wanted him to. Everything that happened was because I wanted it. You've never been in control. And now you are trying to tell me what's going to happen here? <laughs> no. Vala just pulls her collar to the side to show the wound. I'm very aware. I'm not under your control anymore. I do this of my free will. Let Senna and let my uncle go. And I will do whatever you need me to. You see, he kind of moves his finger and your uncle Franklin comes over. Have a drink, Vala. Vala? Daisy. Vala? And you see for just the briefest moment, you see this brief look of pain. And he looks you in the eye. R Have a drink, Daisy! Uh, and the rest of you, as you kind of watch this, you see just the slightest kind of twitch of his eyebrow, of uh, the Major Domo's eyebrow, when uh, Franklin does something different and then everything's back to normal I don't think I want that anymore Vala should I call you Daisy I guess it really did it doesn't matter what you want this is my world these are my people even you after taking out my pip, you still belong to me. Everything belongs t -t -t to me. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to do Everything. what you ask. Go ahead. What? Everything is so I, I I didn't get that, sorry. I said everything I think is so more but The Dark Lord gave me this town. So while I work for him all of you belong to me. But and he's you fine. belong to him. I don't belong to anyone. <laughs> See what you must be to very. Do. It must be very stressful for you. You exerted so much. Control. Shut your mouth, peasant. Uh, and I'd like a wisdom save uh, from you, Rowan. Thirteen. If it's okay, I like to use my inspiration. Go for it. Definitely. Let's see if I can get better than that. <laughs> Two better. Fifteen. Fifteen. As you're saying this, you hear him say, shut up. Your jaw locks shut. The muscles themselves tense to the point where you start grinding your teeth. And it's painful. But you cannot open your mouth no matter what you do, 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 do. That's much better. 
Now where were we? Oh yes. These are mine. You know what I think would be just perfect? You took away my city. That really annoys me. And I'll get it back. Don't worry about that. Again, it's mine. But for right now, especially with parties like this, like, these are a lot of mouths to feed. And you, you know just exactly how hard that can be to do that. And I'm just not going to be able to keep them all at the standard they deserve. So Vala, what I want you to do is you get to pick which ones are going to die. All right? So let's start with, why don't you pick your six least favorite of the people out there, and I want you to kill them for me. How does that sound? Uh, you can make another uh, wisdom save, Rowan. Effectively, every round, you can make another save to resist it. So, roughly every six seconds. Okay. You're fighting against it, but whatever. And this, as it affects you, this is obviously magic. Um, like you are, you are very, very aware that this is magic that has effectively compulsed you to not speak. While this is going on, does he look human? So um, he has suspicions about what he might be, and I'm wondering. Make me, make me a religion to, to check. I'm going for garbage. 15. 15. 15's enough. Um, looking at him physically, you get the idea that he wants he wants to look human. And that's kind of the, the thing that you notice most is everything about him um, almost seems an overcompensation to appear human. Does that make this a sense? Yeah, overly so. He's he's very human. Everything about him is 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 human. Uh, his eyes are human. His teeth are human. His mannerisms are human. Everything screams human, but it all feels artificial. And for the Jaw briefest, a little too square. He is the perfect example. Like if you looked up human in the monster manual, that's what you would see. And yet, for the briefest second, you kind of remember when his eyebrow twitched, his pupils elongated just the tiniest bit to a very unhuman, very fiendish-looking sh shape. Yeah, because we were wondering, like we were theorizing, like if he could be possibly some type of fiend, maybe even possibly a an incubus. Yeah, possible. Or... With with a fifteen, the the things that yeah. you you notice is. He is uh, painfully human, and that is obviously a facade. And the briefest amount of time when you saw the facade for the fade, you saw a slight fiendish, demonic, devil-like appearance of one of his pupa pupils. What is your end game? What is it you want? You've stolen control. I didn't steal anything this is mine i don't need an end game because this is mine she is mine and she points just a random person he is mine you are mine by right by birth by gift it doesn't matter this is mine And I am getting tired of your impertinence. Now, choose six people or I will choose them for you. And what happens when I kill these people? 
I haven't decided yet. Sorry, do you want me just to keep ro rolling? Uh, or... Whenever you feel okay that a round has 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 uh, well six happened, seconds, but I want to like yeah. But I'm, I I mean, whenever you yeah. feel uh, that Relwyn would have had enough time to make another Relwyn, effort, yeah. just let me know that you're rolling. Yeah, um, Rollins, so I'm not Rollins, caught off guard. Yeah, Rollins working his jaw. He's just like he's trying. He's like he's clocking. He knows like he knows what this person is not. Mm -hmm. Got to roll again. Um, eighteen. Eighteen. Eighteen is enough. Po po point of of order ah! question. Um. Uh, Eldritch Blast is technically force damage. Yep. Yes. Could an Eldritch Blast be used to knock someone unconscious without killing them? Rules as written. The only non-lethal damage you can inflict has to be melee attacks. Ranged okay. attacks and spell attacks have to be lethal to the damage, unless there's something in the spell otherwise. With Eldritch Blast, it is it is pure force. Um, so being able to somehow limit the amount of damage that pure force does is a little bit beyond what the spell is capable of. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Like punching somebody and hitting them with a car, are both force damage, but it's hard to pull the punch with a car. Yeah. Um, uh, she will go over to the treasurer then, <sighs> mm -hmm. uh, pick up a chair and just over the back of the head. Okay. Try, uh, try again not to... Make me an improvised weapon uh, to, 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 to attack. So that'll use your strength. Ooh, all, all zero of it. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to say you are not proficient in chair. I'll, I'll take that. Ooh, At least not eight, hitting someone with it. Dancing, maybe. 18. 18. Uh, as you hit him, go ahead and roll a d4 plus your strength mod. That's quaint that you think I have a strength mod four. Yeah, still max damage. As you sit there and hit him with the, ch the chair, uh, if you've ever seen kind of a breakaway chair, uh, as it hits, it shatters, and he lands on the g ground hard. And then you start seeing a pool of blood spilling from him, and that's when you notice in his side is a shard of the chair sticking... Uh, really deeply, you think it probably pierced his heart. Very good, Vala. Now do that five more times. Relwyn in Infernal looks at him and goes, I think your concentration is slipping. I said silence! Silence! And as he Say says it again, you feel the compulsion but you like you can tell you know what you're supposed to do, which is you're supposed to shut up. But you don't feel the actual physical compulsion. Your muscles are still your own. Oh. And he says it in common now. Can you only do the trick once? Vala, I'm going to make this easier on you. You no longer have to kill five more people. Just kill him. And he points at Rowan. Rowan looks him right in the eye and goes like, I'm absolutely terrified most of the time. I've lived that way most of my life. I can see fear in other people's eyes, too. Why are you scared of me? I shouldn't matter. Why are you scared of me? I'm not afraid of anything, peasant. I don't like you. And when I find things that I don't like, I make them suffer. And I need a con save from you. Uh, 
I normally have this as a war caster for concentration. Does this apply or is this a straight this roll? Is, this is not a, uh, this is just okay. a concentration saving throw for an effect. Okay. Even 10. You take 36 necrotic damage as the words themselves seem to kind of seep into you and you feel them just kind of causing your body to ache and spasm. You watch uh, uh, as he just turns and says, suffer. And as he says that, you can almost see his gaze connect with Relwyn. And you watch as Relwyn just kind of struggles on the ground. And it does take you down to your knees for a second. As a reaction, I want to do Hellish Rebuke on him. Cool. Uh, what's the save? Dexterity 17. 17. That's really I'll be, it may Now, if he's immune, it'll, I, it, now I know there's a point to him rolling. Uh, he could just be resistant. <laughs> I, had, I had to look over the, the stat block just to see, because I, I thought for a second he would be resistant. He's not, and he rolled a three, which even with his pretty decent uh, saving throws is not worth me adding them to, to, to together. So uh, roll your damage, and then I need everyone to roll initiative. For, 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 for oh, God. Ah, oh, I just had Wait. a brilliant idea. I was gonna test him, but I, like I'm also like he he hurt me massively. I need to either test him or whatever. Uh, Twenty two points of fire damage, and that was a, that was a uh, tiefling ability, not an actual spell for me. So, uh, it's it's still cast as a spell though. Yes, yes, it does. I just wanted to okay. let you know in case it yep. was a... that's this. Per, 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 hmm. Um. Technically, the tiefling version of it uses your charisma, not your wisdom, for your, its spellcasting. It, it's it said that he had to make a dexterity. That's what it said on my thing. No, I'm saying uh, for the uh, for the saving throw. The saving throw would be based off your charisma score, not your wisdom score, I believe. Unless I'm misremembering how that particular. I'm show. I'm I'm literally repeat showing what it said. It says dexterity 17 saving throw. Ignore what I'm saying. Because he, he has to make the saving throw. Yeah, but what did it, uh, so the, the saving throw is based off of a, a casting ability. Yeah. And my understanding for uh, for tieflings is that casting ability for that thing is normally your charisma, which I don't think is as high as your wisdom. Uh, give me two seconds. I'm actually going to l l l look it up. Well, I mean, regardless right of still, I mean, regardless of what everything I did was. This is this is mostly, yeah. Charisma is your spellcasting ability for these spells. So, um, what would what would your your say? Oh, it doesn't matter because I rolled a three. He can't roll high enough. Like he wouldn't get up to a ten. So it doesn't matter. Um, moving forward, if you're using Infernal Le Legacy, uh, the Hellish Rebuke from Infernal Legacy, mm -hmm. um, the saving throw for that spell would be eight plus your proficiency plus your charisma score, not your wisdom score. Um, which I don't have your character. Oh, I do. It's literally right in front of me. Yeah, it's and I'm I'm let's see. Unless it's which which your which your charisma. Real it quick. Ca it, it casts it says that it casts it as a second level, and it says that in my thing. Yeah, I know. Um, just w because D and D Beyond might not be referencing it correctly. I just need to know what is your charisma score. One second. Uh, my charisma is a fourteen. It's plus two. So. And I'm to... just copying and pasting Infernal Legacy. Yeah, I, I'm literally reading it right now. Oh. The bottom of Infernal Legacy oh, says, Charisma is your spellcasting ability for these spells. Oh. So, moving forward, it would be, uh, if it's 14, uh, that means uh, 8 plus, what's the proficiency bonus right now? Plus 5. 5, so 7, uh, it would be 15. Uh if you're using, if you're casting it through your infernal legacy, um, where you get to cast it um, once without using us as a spell slot, which, which I was. Okay, so if you use it that way, the DC is fifteen, not seventeen. Does that make sense? I, it might be bumping it up because of something else I have. I think it's it's probably because of my amulet or something. Uh. Again, I'm going off of what D and D Beyond has, and what, what is your my equipment and everything. 
What is your normal spellcast in DC? Uh, let's see. I'll just turn. I'll just take off my amulet for a second. No, no, no. If you cast a spell that's not Hellish Rebuke, what is your spell save DC? A spell that's not Hellish. Oh, well, I mean, with the. Normally, uh, spell save DC is 19. 19. Okay, that's what it was. Then 17 is the right number. Um, it's just getting a boost because of your, your amulet thing. So 17 is the right number. 19 is your normal one. Okay. Enough uh, 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 of figuring out how that works. Um, okay. I just wanted to m m m m make sure that uh, uh, it was it was using the right ability scores. This is all it was. So... Um, initiative. Let's do the, the that now. Hmm. So, uh, we'll go to Argenta. What do you got? Argenta? Sorry, I was muted. 19. 19, thank you. Uh, Lilian? 11. 11. Uh, Vala? 8. And then Rowan? 4. Cool. <laughs> I'm All changing right. my dice again. So, uh, first things first, do you remember how much damage you did? I think it was 22? 22. 22, thank Sounds you. Right. Uh, oh, you're not going to like this. So, <laughs> as you sit there and you feel this thing, you uh, the kind of infernal uh, uh, energy inside you um, just kind of flares up and you look at him and you guys see fire shoot through Rowan's eyes as he sits there and he, he extends his hand. Uh, you see this burst of flame go, and as it hits uh, the uh, Major Domo, you watch as he just closes his eyes and the fire transfers down, and you hear Senna just scream out in agony. That wasn't smart, peasant. But before anyone else can do anything, Argenta, you're super fast. Yeah, so how far is he from... Because I'm at the... So he's across the bonfire from me. So how far is he? Uh, so the bonfire is 20 feet. He was another uh, 50 feet behind that. So 70 feet right now. 70 feet, okay. And if you walk through the bonfire, uh, it is difficult terrain, and it is literally smoldering coals. So looks painful to walk on, I was just say. Uh... And then he's really loud. Although the fat, although the the trick on walking on burning coals is to do it super fast. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, having traveled so long with Vala, did they get like a proficiency <laughs> on say. traveling on coals? Are we proficient in in walking over things that used to be on Fifa Fire? Because we sh should be. I was just seeing if. Um... There was a. Oh, okay. No, um, I'm not slowed by difficult, non-magical difficult terrains because I'm a ranger. Oh yeah, and fire, especially since you're a forest ranger, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, you've dealt with fire before. Um, so I'm just gonna run across the coals. Okay. Um, I'll say, due to your ranger training, you're not gonna take full damage, uh, but yeah. you are gonna take a little bit of damage. That is three points of fire damage. Which is reduced to one because of my dad. Oh, yeah. So ignore the fire. <laughs> um, you just, then... you can, as you step through it, like other people are going, Ugh! and you're just like, it's fine. I do this on Thursdays. <laughs> no, I'm going to dash through and basically get in his face before howling into a rage. Okay. And, uh, I still have 10 feet of movement, but I'll end my turn there because I was action bonus action on most of my movement. Uh, my question for you, there's a large table that is between you and him. Are you stopping on the other side of the table or are you getting on the, to the table? I'll get on the table. Uh, make me a quick athletic... Ignore it because you won't fail it. <laughs> I was like, make me an athletic... No, no, there's no point. <laughs> If you got a one, that would still be a 14. <laughs> and you have advantage, because you're I, angry. 
I've had Prodigy since the beginning of the campaign. I'm sorry. So uh, you get up and you kind of like, Rah! and uh, he just goes, Rah! right back at you. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else you want to do with your turn? Nope. It's everything. Uh, Liliane, <laughs> what do you want to do? do, do? I will say, you guys won't be able to just run up to him because there's people in your way. Not just right. fire that apparently doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so that being said, Lillian, what would you like to do? do, do? Um, would my dollars have fears tell me anything about what he might be? Uh, go ahead and make uh, an uh, uh, intelligence history with advantage. Now I'm trying to stack up clues like he understands Infernal. Sixteen. Um. He from everything you can tell and how people are kind of reacting and, and the mere fact that he was able to kind of speak a word into, uh, effectively into existence. And he keeps doing that. It is obvious to you. There is something infernal ab 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 about him, but the things that he most, he most resembles are not, fiends like you can't think of a single devil or demon that would explain what he is uh to be perfectly honest the thing that he most resembles uh is an aberration uh. um but he is most or the the abilities that he's showing uh, are more similar to things you've seen aberrations do but he is most definitely actual physical type is a fiend so whatever he is he is something unique and kind of a mixture between fiend and aberration, and we actually have run into both. In regards to the in the, in the cemetery, it was both a it was both a uh, they were disguised mm -hmm. uh, to make to appear other things. So uh, that did not require an action. So that was just that was just knowledge that you have because you are a uh, b -b blood hunter. Yeah. Um, can I get? Uh, how how do you want to get through the crowd? You can try to force your way th th through. You can try to be sneaky. You can cut your way through. I mean, however hmm. you think you want to do this. I will try it. Be Okay. Uh, go ahead and make me uh, a dexterity acrobatics to, 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 to check uh, to try and weave your way th 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 through people. Uh, uh, that would be a okay, so as you're going, uh, when the fire went out, everyone stopped doing everything and they just kind of stared up at him. As soon as the fire shot out and hit him, uh, the people kind of turned and are all looking at you. And as you start to go, hands start grabbing at you and trying to stop you. And you get about 10 feet before you are effectively grappled by three different people who are just okay. gripping you and making it so you can't move. So that was your, your movement. Uh, you still have action, but the bonus action. Uh, and I try to form Sure. Standard uh, grapple check. So you can use strength athletics or dex acrobatics. Uh, These people are not super strong. Uh, that would be a weapon. I really like these dice. They're super pretty. Uh, but I haven't rolled a, I haven't rolled a double digit all night, <laughs> so I got a five. 
So you are able to kind of break out of the Guga grapple, but they are very angry at you, and they're um. saying they're cursing at you and just saying horrible things. Uh, that's your action. Any bonus action you wanted to do? Um. Would it be a bonus action for me to try to make more than activate my team? Uh, I believe I... Um, activating your right, I believe, is a bonus action. Yeah. And drawing a single weapon uh, is your free object interaction. Oh, oh yeah. So, if you were to draw two, that requires either a feat or... An action. Oh, right. A single one is f -f fine. Alright, so As you activate the right, you can see them kind of cower back for a bit and they kind of block their eyes from the light, but they don't have any kind of negative reaction beyond hey, you effectively just lit a torch in their face. <laughs> uh, Anything else? Uh, no. Vala. And I'd like to point out I didn't actually roll for the bad guys. D&D &D Beyond rolled for the bad guys and still can't roll double digits. <laughs> so, Vala, you're up. Okay, so... How far away am I from Relwyn? From well, Relwyn, you're, um, I don't know, 10, 15 feet. Like, you guys are relatively close to each other. Perfect. So seeing how Franklin reacted, seeing an agent of the Dark Lady, mm -hmm. I am going to rush over to Relwyn and embrace him and say, Uncle Franklin... I'm in love with him, and I'm having his baby. <laughs> Take inspiration. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to make you roll for anything. What do you want to happen because of I'm, what you did? I'm hoping... No, seeing his reaction before, uh -huh. I'm I'm hoping this is gonna like just a, a crack in that control. Cool. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. Um. So as you rush over and you embrace him, I love him, Uncle, and I'm pregnant with his baby. Very like. Oh my god. You just turned this into a soap opera. <laughs> One of you has to develop amnesia now. Um, so as you did do that uh, without without missing a beat, he goes, you fucking whore! And then you watch his face kind of c c contort in anger and you watch him and as, he, as you see him, you see him kind of grab his neck and as he pulls it down, you can see another kind of manacle around his neck that looks very similar and he starts getting his fingers under it and as he does you can see little cuts and everything as his fingernails are kind of digging into his throat to try and get this off and he's fighting it he's like daisy fuck him up and, and then his eyes kind of roll back and he just falls onto the ground and then uh for my action i will cast dimension door okay and take myself and Relwind uh, directly behind the Major Domo. Okay. Um, you're farther than 60 feet. You succeed. So. Um, That's your action. And so uh, to get to, 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 to him, that took, uh, because the people in the way, that took your movement to get to, 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 to Relwind. Okay, that that's fine, um, and that's a fourth level spell. And then uh, Senna, how hurt does she look? 
Uh, she looks really, really b -b bad, like barely conscious. Uh, your your sister does not look like she can take 22 hit points of did damage. Okay. Uh, then as my bonus action, I will use uh, three of my healing light. Uh, three dice from my healing light pool. Okay. Uh, to heal her up. Uh, okay. Um, I will mention um, the kind of stage that they're on is like like 10 feet high. So if you teleport, and they're on the edge of it, so if you teleport behind them, you're going to be about 10 feet below them. Is that what you were hoping for? Or does that change your, mm. your puppet plan? I was trying to uh, uh, get Relin within touching distance effectively within touching distance if possible if not oh, um, oh. getting behind him this, you wouldn't this... be able to, to, to do that if you want to get like beside him or something you can do that um but they're they're literally at the edge of this stage so well yeah i then i would get try to get beside him okay yeah that's fine I'll, i also want to try to get close closer to senna so okay yeah that's that's Perfect. If you want, you can kind of appear on the other side of the table, in front of of her, her place setting. Okay. Yeah. That that sounds good. Okay. So and, and then I'll I'll reach out, uh, heal her five points. Okay. Uh, not as good as I was hoping. And then I'll look to Relwin and say, "Sorry. Don't know what you had planned." Love. I think. Relwyn still needs to deal with the fact that apparently you're pregnant <laughs> by him, and he doesn't remember this in Kick Encounter. I think that's the bigger news here. No, yeah. Relwyn knows. Like he's not, so, <laughs> he's not so stupid. He just he doesn't know how the birds and the bees work. <laughs> he's just like, why are you saying this? This is a bad idea. <clears throat> As that happens, um, the. Uh, the people down there, aside from Franklin, who is now just unconscious um, and kind of writhing on the f -f floor, uh, they're going uh, to make some attacks uh, uh, against uh, uh, Lillian because she's the only one that's there right now. So I have a 22, a 19, an 8 to 18. And another to the 22. How many of those does this hit? Every single one. Okay. Uh, you take five points of piercing damage, uh, or bludgeoning damage, sorry, for each one, uh, as they're now just swinging anything they can. Some of them are hitting you with um, uh, tankards. Uh, some of them are just beating you. Some of them are picking up chairs and things, and they're just all around you, attacking you. Mm. <laughs> Four. Five. If I rolled five times, I meant four. No, I, I can't hide. Um. So that's them, and the 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 rest of the mob is trying to kind of climb up on the. Uh, actually, no, they're not. They have moved up to the, the stage. None of them have set foot on the stairs that lead up to the stage, however. Uh, and they look to be... Oh, a couple of them would be kind of picking up things to throw at you. Uh, and I don't have... I'll just roll this. I'll roll this because it gives me the right and the number. Actually, no, they're... No, it is the right because it uses dex. Okay, cool. So, uh, a 14... These are all against Vivala right now. 14 and 18. An 8. And a 19. How many of those does this hit? Uh, two. Two. Okay, you would take... I need a d4. Uh, you would take six damage each for the two that hit you. And then for Relwyn... We have an 18, a 5th to the team, a 3rd to the team, and a 22. Two hit. Two hit. Uh, so you will to take 
uh, five points of damage for each one that, that hits you. As they're now just throwing things up on the uh, stage to try and hit you. And they're rocks or just various uh, items that they're able to p p pick up and th throw. That is their turn. Uh, the Major Domo sees you all here and he kind of kicks his chair back and you watch as he rises into the air slightly. This is mine! And how do I do this? Uh, clerics don't have counterspell. Uh, none of these are spell effects, unfortunately. <laughs> the first one... Uh, the first one is aimed at uh, Argenta, since you're the, the first one. And I don't think this one's going to affect you, but I'm going to see anyway. Can you be frightened while you are raging, Argenta? Yes, I can. You can? Okay, then make me a wisdom sister save, please. Is it a or something? No, eventually bar 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 barbarians get an immunity to fear and mind control stuff, but it's pretty far along the barbarian path. That's when you're a berserker. Oh, is it only bar bar berserkers? Oh. Yeah, they get mindless rage. Ah, that makes sense. Um, Elven thing is only uh, charms, right? Yes, only charmed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, 14. 14. Not quite enough. As he sits there and he looks at you, he goes, You will fear me, beast! You feel a chill go down your spine. Your heart starts beating faster than it ever has before. You're, you're having a hard time breathing. Every time you uh, inhale, it feels like you're only taking half a breath. You are terrified of him. Uh, and you are frightened for a minute. Um, and you can repeat the saving throw at the end of uh, each of your turns. Uh... He turns towards Vala. I have to count. One. Oh, that was actually the wrong way. That's fine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, this one's fun. Uh, Vala, make me a deck save. Uh, this is not a spell effect. This is not a spell effect. 22. 22. Uh, he t -t 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 turns uh, to you uh, and says, You, stay there and wait for my command. And you feel all of your muscles start to seize. And you watch your fingers start to turn gray as you are slowly starting to turn to stone. And without thinking, you just kind of move. And as you move, you actually realize whenever he says a word, he emanates some sort of directional force from him. And when it hits you, it started turning you to stone. And getting out of it is what stopped it from taking the effect. So you move out of the way slightly. Uh, the final one, he looks towards Relwyn. Already halfway. <laughs> well, you guys gave him three targets. So... So he gets three of these. <laughs> and there's three of you. So... Uh, and he turns to you and goes, MOVE! Uh, and I need a strength saving throw from you. Oh, good, the one. <laughs> strength saving throw. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> it's a nat 20. Wow, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> As he's kind of raised in the air, he turns to Rob and he goes, MOVE! And he pushes you forward, and you feel as if a giant hand grips you and starts to lift you in the air and you start feeling it th throw back, uh, start to throw you back and you just go Rah! and you kind of spread your arms out and you actually were a, a couple inches off the ground and you kind of drop and you see Mo kick a K. Uh, does anything happen on a save?
Yep, nope. That's all it is. So. Uh, that is his t -t 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 turn. He's close enough that he doesn't feel the need to leave. Relwyn, you are up. Rowan's like, oh, okay, I got a feeling that shouldn't have worked. I think we have to destroy that, uh, the collar, before we can do anything damaging to him. And all the stuff that's going on right now, can I tell, like, is there weirdness going on? Because, like, he just did some holy, like, stuff that I know he can't do. We understand he's a variant of whatever it is that he is. Make, make, uh, an intelligence check. Just a, a flat intelligence check. Intelligence. Twelve. Uh, what he's doing, he shouldn't be able to do. And whatever um, whatever he's doing now is not magical in nature. It is somehow innate. But beyond that, you don't know. Well, I don't know what else I can do right now. And I got a feeling like he's going to do some horrible stuff to me. So... Yeah, I'm going to have to try, at the very least, try and... Uh, right now, I think I need to do... If I go down, I'm concerned what happens if I do <laughs> for everyone else. Uh, so at the very least, I'm going to try and do a, I'm going to try and do a second level cure wounds on myself. Okay. Did you let that happen? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's 13. Back to me. All right. So and... you guys uh, watch as, as Rowan kind of focuses... Uh, and you see the kind of healing power go, and you can see a few of the wounds that he got previously start to kind of knit themselves. He definitely does not like me. I think before we can do any harm to him, he definitely need to take his power away. He's using these people as shields. Um, and is anyone... Is anyone... Uh, is The only person who was wounded was the treasurer, yes? Uh... Yeah, the only person that's been hurt thus far, other than Senna, uh, was the treasurer, and that was done by Vala. Is he, looks like he's dying? Uh, he's dead. Okay, he, he so, bled so, out. Oh, okay, so Spare the Dying wouldn't be, wouldn't apply. No, he's, he's d -d 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 dead. And he's also, you know, 70, 80 feet away from you at this point, because uh, Vala dimension doored you two up to the, up to the stage. So. Ah, Okay. Uh, in that case, I think I'll just try and step away. It says, like, you really don't seem to like me very much. I wonder why it is, despite everything you say, you seem to be so scared of someone like me. And that'll pretty much be the end of my turn. I'll be to, like, step away from Vala. Like, I'll just be, like, I try and be, like, distance a little bit in case he tries to do anything of a cone or AoE nature. Give, give us a fighting chance. Okay. And he uh, turns towards you and says, "Freeze!" Uh, and I need a deck save f -f from you. Fifteen. You uh kind of look at him and as he says that freeze you can feel this kind of wave of energy hit you f -f from him and you look and your fingers start turning to stone and it goes up your arm and you are currently restrained and you are beginning to turn to stone uh, of course I am uh, that was one legendary action uh, let's go back up to Argenta. So, is this the type of fear that I have to run, or is it just normal fear? Uh, no, this is just regular uh, fear. So, anytime okay. he's within your eyesight, you basically have disadvantage on every fifth of thing. Okay, so she's... And the chains are right next to him. They're not, like... I don't have to move any, right? Uh, no. Um, also, with fear, you can't willingly move closer to the source of your fear. 
Oh, I know. I'm already right in front. Yeah, I was going to say anyway, when so. he said that you were within kissing distance. So yeah. Um, so the chains are like I can reach them from here, right? Uh, yeah, you can reach. Uh, yeah, because you're right next to him. You can technically reach all of the of them. Okay, so she's gonna, in her like rage state, specifically the one that Vala pointed at, the one with Vala's sister. Mm-hmm. She Argent is just gonna like gr- try and grab it, and using her dagger as like a pinpoint is going to try and rip the chain. Ooh, okay. Not quite what I was expecting. Um, make me a strength athletics check, which normally I'd say with disadvantage, but you already have it, so. And then due to the raging. fact that you're raging, it's flat. Um, uh, so plus 18, that is going to be 22. 22. So as you sit there and you try and kind of force the dagger in, uh, you feel the, the chain itself uh, start to kind of give in your, your hand, and you see it bend a, a little bit and cook a crack. As it does that, Senna cries out in it, uh, like you've just stabbed her. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have you have damaged the chain a little bit, but it seems that you've also damaged a, a, a Senna as well. well, well, well. All right, mm. that's my action. Um, not quite sure. What else I can do? So I'll just end my turn and make that save again. Okay. Fifteen. Uh, not good enough, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, as you do, 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 do that, he goes, Argenta, why do you hate Senna so much? You're killing her. Daisy, you may want to stop your friend before they murder your sister. Lillian. You are unfortunately by yourself at this point. You're also muted. Hey, I will try to use my sword so I can intimidate and crawl to pay him back off and call it to whatever. Okay. Go ahead and make uh, an intimidation ch- 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 check. seem really intimidated by you. They look more annoyed than anything else. Like someone, like, shining a light in the dark. Yeah. It's like, turn off the freaking light! Strength athletics, Booker, please. As you try and kind of force them through, like these people individually, you would have no problem going up against any of them uh, and from a physical point. These are not super buff people. But as a group, they just kind of pack around you tighter and you are not able to to get any purchase whatsoever. You are you don't move uh, even five feet closer to your f- f- friends. Uh, uh, um. I'll say that combined with the intimidation check will be your action. Uh, uh, 
Domo is going to look at let's let's call it Vala this time at the end of your turn. Okay, uh, and uh, as he turns uh, to, 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 to you, uh, Vala, he goes, "You will fear me as well," uh, and I need a wisdom save from Vava Vala. Um, is this technically being charmed? This is a fear effect. Nine. Nine. You are also afraid of him for the next minute. Same okay. thing that happened to uh, Argento. So. Okay. Uh, that being said, Vala, you are up. Okay. Well. I mean, if this works, it works. Um, I'm going to attempt to try to cast Polymorph on him. Okay. Wait, no. I'm going to cast Polymorph on Senna. I'm just gonna look at her and go, I need you to be brave. Remember when we were kids and we used to play dinosaurs? Huh. And I will attempt to cast her into a Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> you know what? Um, it's a lot of weird shit I was expecting from you. <laughs> This was not one of them. Um, what is your spell save DCC? Technically, uh, she is still involuntary for this. It's an 18. It's an 18. I don't know if I can roll that that high. Well, I got a 4. some bizarre reason, I don't think whatever save it is, she has a plus 14. It is wisdom. I mean, so. she's, she's a smart cat. I'm gonna, she, she's, a, she's very smart. Very smart. But plus 14 Much. wisdom save seems a little high for a kid. Yeah. 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 So, uh... <sighs> I don't have the stat blocks of a T-Rex in front of me, so... I wasn't quite expecting that uh i i have those handy oh i'm uh, uh i'm gonna i'm gonna get it real quick here here we go i just need this so you sit there and you look at your sister and she kind of looks at you and then she gets this look of fear on her face and then she starts growing and changing and just before her face starts turning reptilian, you see her smile at you in a very unsettling smile. And now there is a T-Rex. <laughs> whom I'm going to say uh, acts after your initiative because I didn't roll initiative for your sister sister because she was a prop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And she is going to look at you, reach down, and take a bite out of Vala. What? He's on his control. Yeah. <laughs> can you just drop? You can just drop concentration at any time, right? I mean, probably when she bites me, I will, anyways. <laughs> uh, so. That is a 19. 
as she chomps on you. <sighs> yep, that works. So it's 33 piercing damage. Um, you are grappled mm. and restrained. And uh, the T-Rex is also going to uh, tail swipe at Rowan. Of course. Um, b- before that happens, though... I was going to say, do you want to make a concentration check because of that damage? Uh-huh. Yeah, I rolled a 10. 10. Okay. So she swings her massive tail towards you, Rowan. Ah! And as it gets closer, <laughs> it goes... Zoop, and you just feel this brief flush of air. She's back. And she looks at you, she smiles evil, and then she gets out of it. And she smiles again. She doesn't seem 100% under his c- 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 control, but enough. Uh, that Just was look at Bella. Great. That was not helpful! Do you still have your inspiration? Because if you don't, take another. Because that was absolutely b- b- brilliant. That was worth a shot. <laughs> Definitely. That was a awesome move I wish it would have ended differently for, for, for you um, at the end of her turn did one on Rowan no I did Rowan's on four so I know I haven't had time for a second round yet no no no, no. I'm trying yeah. to remember how many times how many legend uh, legendary actions I've done uh I know I've done at least two, and I thought I was going to do a third after Vala. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. So, one more legendary. This one's going to be against... Oh, that's what I was going to do. Yeah. Um, so, uh, he uh, uh, turns towards your sister and just goes, Move! And you watch him kind of extend his hand, and you watch as she kind of rises up and floats behind him. So now she's about... 10 feet above the platform hanging in air about 20 feet behind him. And you notice the chain itself wasn't 20 feet long before and has gotten longer. However, the part that you were holding Argenta is still kind of cracked where you made your your mark and your is technically still in your hands. Um, never mind. Uh, the people uh, are going to again uh, try to bop Vala. I will say they have a plus four, so the fact that they hit anyone is impressive. That's more like it. Six, not Vala. Uh, this is um, Lillian. Six for fifteen. 14 and 20. Oh my god, 26. Okay, so you take five points of bludgeoning damage as someone kind of bops you. Uh, and then uh, for the people in the Sissus stage, uh, Vala, you're going to take two attacks from people chucking shit at you. Do I, um, since I'm, I'm assuming I'm prone. Uh, you were not. Okay. You were just g- g- grappled, and then the teeth went away. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a six, by the way. Uh, six does not hit. And a seven. Uh, and then uh, Rowan, you will also get two at the attacks. I'm currently restrained. You uh, well. Oh yeah. So that nat one goes away, turns into a twenty. No, no, dirty twenty. Dirty. Okay. And then the second at the attack is what a twenty one. Stage one of petrification. Uh so uh since both those hits you would take five points each, total of to ten bludgeoning to the damage. As they chuck stuff at you. Uh and then it is the Major Domo's turn again. Uh again he has three targets, one each. Vala. Vala, he says, move! And I need a strength save from you, Vala. Because 
I am so strong. Twelve. Ooh, I just realized. When he says move, you watch as Senna drops to the g -g -g ground. Or slowly lowers to the g -g ground. And what was the save? Uh, Twelve. Twelve. You feel some unknown hand g -g grip you and lifts you and just uh, lifts you straight up into the air 30 feet and uh, back uh, so that you're slightly off the uh, uh, stage. So you're now dangling about 40 feet above the ground. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and you are currently restrained because of the, the, that. Uh, Argenta? Yep. Uh, he turns to you and goes, Suffer! And I need a con save from you. Hey. Uh, that'll be a 28. 28. 28 definitely makes this a save. Uh, you take half of 36. So that's... 18. 18, thank you. 18 necrotic damage. Okay. Uh, and then Rowan, uh, he uh, turns to you. Uh... He does the exact same thing uh, as he did before. He says, freeze! And I don't think it does anything because you're already starting to become petrified. So he wastes that uh, he wastes that uh, attack. And he's going to move back slightly to where he's now in midair just behind the, 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 the stage. Uh, which means Argenta and Rowan can both attempt opportunity at attacks. I guess so. Amazing. What I I can't hit him. I mean, I I mean, I can't take a swing at him, but I don't. If I hit him, the damage goes to someone else. As far as you can tell, yes, that's what you've seen thus far. So you can take an opportunity attack. You don't have to. Uh, yeah, I like I'm, I know. Because I've already done damage to him and it transferred someone else. Like, he doesn't take a swing at him. Okay. Argento? Um, so, the Santa's dropped to the ground. Is she, like, unconscious? Uh, on the ground? No. She's uh, just on the good ground. Okay. And then, who's the other one? Because uh, I missed that part. The the rest of the, the, the people that are attached to him are just children. Hmm. They're just... Generic kids, they're not connected to Vala at the all. The treasurer's dead. Yeah. Argenta, he... Argenta would raise her dagger, but then with the mixture of the fear and that just primal sense that these people are, like, packed, mm -hmm. she's not going to attack either. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, he just kind of floats back a little, a little bit. So he's now, again, roughly about 10 feet in the air, and he's about 5 feet behind this thing. Rowan! You're up. What do you want to do? Nope. do? He also keeps floating away from us, too. Mm -hmm. um, Rowan's just like, I, do I need to make a save now or at the end of my turn? Uh, it's at the uh, end of your to the turn. So. Okay. Well, I think either way, I'm going to be in trouble. Um, if I can just manage this a little while longer, uh, he's going to go for broke and he's going to use a 7th level spell. He's hoping that they're, because this guy keeps floating away. I don't know, how far away is he now? Uh, he's basically just outside your melee range, effectively. Okay. So. Uh, but he's going to use a 7th level spell. So he's uh, like 5 feet away from you, effectively. Okay. 7th uh, level spell, does it go off, or? Seems like it. Okay. 7th uh, level spell, he's going to conjure a celestial. Shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I just I have to figure out how this is going to work in this realm. Because um, I did ask you said you, that I would be able to conquer. Yeah, you can. I'm just I'm trying to figure out. Describe your celestial. Um, I'm going to say. You are not because uh, the the spell itself says you literally kind of bring one from. Yeah. You aren't. 
what you are doing is you are literally creating from your own mind what you think a celestial would be and you were literally creating it in front of you i did a lot of a lot of esoteric readings describe what you think this looks like oh i well i actually i know what i'm summoning so okay um i did a lot of research as a uh, readings uh what you see is like something, but it's like it's I'm channeling her, the dark lady. So as a lot of it, like the eye is definitely like just go black, mm-hmm. and he's as he begins speaking in celestial, but it's kind of layers and on top of layers and like I say, uh, yeah. I will, I will. And, uh, for flavor, each god has their own color that they're associated mm-hmm. with. Uh, the dark lady is a deep indigo. If you want, okay, to use deep that. indigo, his eyes will go deep in just solid indigo then as in his eye he knows he's he's summoning uh, a uh, a uh, celestial of of aid of uh, of knowledge of capability a, a celestial but not of the humanoid angelic type you would presume to know of in terms of other forms of celestials you know of this one is of a serpentine variety large for the size for the creature it is snake-like, medium-sized mechanically, resplendent uh, scales, wings coming out of it as he summons a coatl. Ooh. So, as Rowan uh, kind of sits there and kind of sees everything going, you guys watch as Rowan does something very, very strange. Um, Rowan g- takes a knee. Uh, at first, which is weird, and then again, his eyes go the deep indigo. He starts speaking multiple uh, uh, phrases simultaneously. Um, his mouth, uh, as you guys watch his mouth form the words, you can actually see kind of like an echo of three or four different mouths all saying different things simultaneously. His armor starts to glow b- 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 blue. There's this kind of blue aura, and it starts to kind of coalesce and <coughs> form into this serpentine pattern. You see a pair of wings burst out from it and you can see standing in front of you this strange kind of winged snake creature i have no idea what it does uh so i'm assuming yeah. you have the step block for, for, for it. oh i have everything pulled up yeah cool, i, I cool, look cool. stuff up in advance on all this stuff um, remind it does some me, wild shit <laughs> it happens after it it happens I directly s- after your turn or well depending on how you want to do it because i it says that i roll initiative on it Oh, do you go want ahead me to and... roll initiative on it, or do you want me to do you want to have it just go after me? You are last in initiative. Um, go ahead and roll initiative, and it'll take its turn when its turn c- c- comes around. And if okay. it's after you, meaning under four, it'll get a turn this round. Otherwise, it won't get a turn until next round. Okay, so that's an eleven on the die. Okay, it has a dex. So it's, it's modifier is plus five. Okay, so um, it will go after Argenta. Okay. So I the 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 thing that I'm using, um, I don't sure. know how to add someone. So just remember, after Argenta, it's your quadles uh, to the turn because I probably will f- 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 forget. Okay, and I definitely do speak out. Uh, and it actually, even, the, the interesting thing is about the spell. Even though it, it is the one it is telepathic, it speaks all languages. Yeah. Um, but even if it was, it would. Because of the context of the spell, it would understand me, even though I speak, if I speak common. Mm-hmm. So I just look, basically speak to it and I go like, "We could all use some help, please. Help any way you can." Um, it is getting really late. Yeah, and so do you want me to go ahead and make my save on the? Uh, go ahead and uh, make your save because if you become petrified, you lose concentration. Yeah, I think I have two. Do I, do I have three tries or two tries? You have this try. Okay. So let's right. see what you make, and then we'll go from the, the, there. So go ahead and make your... Um, uh, again, it's it's a deck save. Well, the deck save? Uh, yeah. It's well, is a, it, I, thought, I thought it was to avoid initially. Is it still a deck save even though I'm fighting petrification? So to read the, the thing, the target creature must make a DC... Uh, must make a deck save. I'm not going to tell you guys a DC yet. Yeah, uh, yeah. On a failed save, uh, the creature begins to turn to stone and is restrained. It must repeat the saving throw at the end of its next turn. On a success, the, su- the effect ends. On a failure, the creature is petrified. 
Okay. So it is it is the same thing again. There's, well, crap. Well, then I'm screwed then, because that means if I'm restrained, I'm making it disadvantage. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a rough ab -ab 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 ability. I just didn't realize it was still going to be Dex even after. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm I'm going to be petrified. Yeah, I'm petrified. Bye. So as the creature oh. kind of appears, and I'm going to say since you burnt a seven level spell slot for it, uh, what one thing did you want it to do? Like I'll, I'll let you take an action. Of the, I'll let the creature take an action before it goes away. Oh, um, okay. Do you really want that to happen? Uh, what action do you want to happen? It's going to cast Greater Restoration on me. You know what? I'm fine with that. I actually think that's funny. <laughs> I think that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, because that, that was literally what was going to have it help I, me do. I, I love that. Uh, <laughs> so, this is this is so much better than what I thought you were going to do with it. So as you sit there and you're 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 watching, you guys are all watching him turn to stone. And as you see the stone kind of creeping up his neck, he says this. And as it kind of goes up and it starts closing down, he just goes, "Help us!" And the creature looks down, and it kind of bows its serpentine head down and just places a single kiss on his forehead. And he watches, Shoo! all of the stone disappears. And Rowan just real quick kind of checks himself. <sighs> And unfortunately, <laughs> well, at least that's not a cliffhanger. <laughs> that is where we're going to end it for tonight because it is very, very late, and I don't want to abuse my uh, players by making you stay here yeah. for another hour. Um, as always, uh, if you missed any of uh, the, this, I do upload them all to my YouTube channel, it's youtubecom trainer Jody. Otherwise, uh, thank you again for t t tuning in. That is all for me today, and I'll see you guys in the next time. All right. Bye-bye.